Peace and blessings. You're watching That's What's Up with Kiyama Muhammad. That's What's Up is a series to showcase the lives of those in the albinism community to share their stories and experiences. We're here with our guest for today, Sister Monique, if you'd like to introduce yourself. I am Monique. I'm from Chicago. I do have albinism. I am a Black woman living with albinism. Um, I don't know what else really to, to say. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm so unprepared for this. I, I agreed to do it, but I really wanted to get your questions first. So this is going to be interesting for both of us. <laughs> I can think to just start. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. No, most people don't. I think you probably get more authentic answers when you don't uh, tell the person what it is you're going to ask. But that's just me being nosy. That's why I wanted the questions. <laughs> not that you were supposed to send them. You know what I mean? I'm not a celebrity or anything. Y'all help my Beyonce. Like, I need the questions first. No, no, ma'am. So I'm I'm actually curious. So yeah, I'm I'm curious to what we'll be discussing. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Um and as mama said, you're the first sister that we've gotten the um, interview to be out. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> oh, uh, no problem at all. Uh, that's cool. So I'll be the, the first. Uh, that's fine. That makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, like a milestone type. <laughs> right. You know, I know it's, I think it's, um, probably just a privacy thing. A lot of women don't want to um, discuss, mm -hmm. I guess, that because it, it's so much more to it than that. I noticed that with men, they're way more willing to discuss it um, just openly without any ego. My first question would be, how was it for you growing up? Or well, even before that, <clears throat> um, what was what was your parents' reaction for when you were born? Um, I think for my mom and for my dad, it was my mother has seen now about the people with albinism before and my father. Hold on a second. What's wrong? I'm messing up the whole show. Yeah, I'm gonna text you. And so <laughs> this is pre-recorded, right? You can just cut that all of this out. Okay. We'll, we'll cut it so, out. <laughs> thank you. Um, so they both had experience seeing people who had albinism before as children and growing up. So I think it was just more of a shock when nobody else in the family has albinism mm -hmm. that you would have a child with albinism. Mm -hmm. I also think because I was born in 80, literally 1980, um, at that time, I don't know if things were as progressive. So there were things that they just weren't even told about, like sunblock, me having to need sunblock or um, being low vision. Mm -hmm. So I think for them, it was just more my dad, it was more of a protective thing. And your father would probably agree is that you kind of feel like, okay, you know, I know what I'm going to have to do. And for my mom, it just was what it was. They were both very overprotective, but I don't think it was like, oh my God, you know, how did this happen? I think it was more of a, okay, uh, we, they knew that it would not be an easy thing to deal with because you now have to, to prepare this child for um, obstacles outside of just being a black, black a black child, whether that's male or female. Mm -hmm. I, so it's, it's a lot more to it. So I think they might've went to that, but they were both young too. My parents had me when they were like 23, 24. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they really had a shock. At least if they did, they didn't discuss that <laughs> with me. They just, you know, it was just like, whoa. Now other family members, that's different. But with my actual parents, no, nah, it wasn't a shock. Or it was like, it, it is what it is. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you know, uh, what are you going to do? My dad told me that he felt, he thought I was the most beautiful baby he had seen, that my hair was so pretty and all of these things. And so it just all depends on the person. Not all people are lucky enough to be born to parents who actually are uh, proud and don't see them as anything different. And so 
I'm grateful for my parents because I didn't realize it until coming up that there are people who have albinism like I do who did not have actually supportive parents, caring, loving parents who treated them the way that anybody would treat any other child. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, like, so I think that's, this is what I'll say in regards to people not being willing to discuss this. It's almost like you have to be vulnerable just to even admit or acknowledge to the difference that you have from other people. Mm -hmm. And so for when you live in a world where everybody wants to be bad and every, you know what I mean, a bad, we won't say what, but a bad B or a bar B, a hot girl, mm -hmm. admitting that you're different or, or that you have, you know what I mean, some, some just discussing it, it's, it's a vulnerable thing. So yeah, I could see somebody not wanting to do it. <laughs> because it's a, it, it, once you post this, it's like their um, your feelings are now out there. But it has to be discussed. I didn't have people around me with albinism coming up. I didn't meet anybody with albinism like until I was um, well. I, you know, I saw a lady when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. but it didn't mean anything. I was like four or five. It was just like yeah, you know. She was like oh my god, and so happy. And for me, it was just like you know. I don't know her. I just cut it short though and say, no, it wasn't, it's, it is hard or something that, you know, doing again is just a vulnerable thing to discuss your difference or those type of questions because you now have to get into the hurtful part of it. Cause it's, you know, it is, it's a hurtful part to being different or looking different from your own and mm -hmm. constantly having to deal with other people's um inability to accept or their inability to even uh be i don't even want to say civil but um to treat you just as they would anyone else you know what i mean so when people ask questions like what are you such as like what's your race or what uh are you mixed with something or you know things like that having to deal with that all the time is is you don't want to discuss it in your regular life because that you have to deal with on a daily basis outside of that until you come into an understanding of yourself and realize that that's not your problem but as a child it's hard to do that when you're faced with dealing with other children and even ignorant adults mm -hmm. so it's a it's a struggle it's a different type of struggle and to have to be brought back into discussing those things it's like you're taken back to that time so i could see people not wanting to do it but um you know i don't care i i, I don't <laughs> mind discussing it or talking about it i would hope that somebody else can watch something that i'm saying and say you know what yeah she's right and i'm not gonna be down on myself or feel bad about myself i'm gonna not hold my head down when i'm into a room i'm gonna hold it high and, there, and at this point, I'm the type of person where <laughs> as a kid, I hated being the center of attention. Um, but now it's like I expect it. <laughs> I expect to come into the room and everybody's paying me attention and not in an arrogant way. It's just that, you know, that's what I've come. That's the way it is. It's, that's the way it is, I guess it's supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you finish your questions. I'm just it's okay. I'm glad you're able to, you know, get that out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we you talked about um about it a little bit. Yes. Um, was it? Would you describe it as challenging or um just what was it like growing up? <clears throat> well, for me, um. You know, it's almost like somebody asking me what's it like growing up um, with albinism. Like I have to uh, something to compare it to. Uh, my challenge is more so with the visual impairment part, having to be told I couldn't drive. And some people with albinism can, so that's not a, a, a hundred percent everybody's situation. But realizing that my vision was impacting the things, things that I wanted to do. Um, that was the hardest part for me because it's a lot of limitations when you have um, a visual impairment and especially again at that time 
in the 80s, there was no internet. We did not have all of the devices and accommodations um, that are offered to us now. I can carry around a cell phone and use it as a magnifier now. But as a kid, you know, going into a place and you can't see the menu, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So those are my challenges. And those were, um, was pro- that was probably the main thing for me that I, I dealt with. I don't think I, I had a, a different type of family. And so, um, I didn't, I wasn't, I get. I won't even say allowed to, but being told you're beautiful and I love you so much and this from your own, Mm -hmm. it's really not much people in the streets can say that's going to really, really hurt you. Not that I wasn't hurt by by things, because people have said really bad and hateful things to me, but I also noticed that the the darker kids got teased for being dark skinned, the fat kids got teased for being fat, the boy who smelled like pee got teased for that, you know? So I, I started to realize that it's not a me thing. People are rude and evil and mean to each other, period. And if it was not for me being out, but having albinism, I always say albinos, that's what I grew up saying. I really didn't learn the term albinism that I was like 18 again because I was never around anybody like it and I didn't really dwell on it um my mother didn't allow that I, you know and so <laughs> she just didn't like even with if you tried to get into the whole you know somebody was talking about me and why, why did you know God have to make me this way I remember asking her that why did God have to make me this way and you know she made it clear for me in a loving way that um he does not make any mistakes and the mistake is in us not seeing clearly you know the beauty and everything what that we are that is around us I grew up in a nation of Islam as you well know I was going to avoid that because I don't have I, I'm not registered now and but growing up in the nation and knowing who you your uh who you are as a black person who your people are uh, where you come from meaning uh we create it all and so the minister himself even told me that I'm I'm representative of us being produced in all colors. And, you know, he was like, he told me that you are beautiful and God, will, you know, loves you. And he, you know, things that he would say, you know, at, at the time that it was being said to me, it was not as strongly felt as until I was an adult you know, and really start the grasp that um, my difference is beautiful mm-hmm. <laughs> and that my beauty is only apparent when I'm aware of it. So when you don't see who, you don't see yourself in a certain light, others won't need the people you project, we project. And so I can definitely say that how I saw myself coming up with the whole feeling awkward, getting acne and all of those things. So I only paid attention to that type of energy. Once my energy changed then the energy around me from other people changed. So growing up was, I won't say it was, it was a simple, easy, and I didn't have any problems. It's just that I wasn't allowed to dwell on what my differences were as far as me having albinism, having white skin, having blonde hair. I just accepted it for what it is, but having a visual impairment, that was probably the hardest thing for me. So like, it wasn't necessarily just your skin color overall, I should say lack of skin color, but just Mm -hmm. um, just the eyesight that comes with it. Right. the main the main and thing we do we have color we ain't out here we ain't out here like powder when i see you i see a beautiful peach sister don't we peach <laughs> no but i mean we 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 i i you know it bothers me when people do say things like you you have absolutely no color and it's like mm-hmm. no that's not true um we do and we're not ruddy you know what I mean? We're not, <laughs> we, it's, it's a very, um, it's a creaminess to it all. I think just even a, 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 a 
person of color with albinism looks different than the Caucasian with albinism. And I'm not saying that to be in a funny way. So don't say we lack color. We just have no melanin. Even if you take like five, like let's um, black people with albinism this like different shades in there so many different shades and the hair color the eye color the complexion mm-hmm. and so uh it's a beautiful thing i mean and but you have to see we we internally a person has to see it that way and even once you see it that way it's still going to be ignorance but i promise you if we had the darkest skin it would still be a problem and it took having friends um because i didn't even realize the the uh the same feelings that we have darker sisters have Mm -hmm. it's just on a different it's for a different reason it's because they're because the treatment the people the ignorance all of that like i said coming up noticing that children darker kids were teased for that it's just like that's when you realize you know what because <laughs> no matter what people are going to find something to say about it you have to accept yourself and that's as a black person period but we get so much um hatred from other from other races so to have it to come from your own as well that's probably one of the hardest parts is but I also had to realize with growing up in the nation and understanding what the hatred of white skin comes from. And it's not us or us having albinism. It's just that it is, it um, is a symbol of something to some people, something Mm -hmm. negative. Um, And it's a symbol of uh, even people thinking that you get better treatment because of your, you know, we're light or have some, I'm honestly, I've heard that. And I felt like really, you know what I mean? I didn't understand it. So uh, as black people, period, we all have obstacles and albinism just adds a different component to that. Um, but it's hard to say how it was because I can't compare it to, you know what I mean? I can't mm-hmm. compare it to somebody. You don't have a different experience. to Right. It's so, yeah, because uh, uh, I had a, a person interview me, a written interview, and asked me that. She was like, well, how's it, what, how was it growing up? Uh, how, no, how, how has having albinism affected your outlook on beauty? And I'm just like, affected it. I didn't acquire it. You know what I mean? This is how I was born. I didn't just acquire this. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't I didn't understand what she meant and I tried to make sense of it, but I was just like, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. But I think I get what you mean. Like what are some of the experiences you had? And their their children can be very mean, but again, we weren't allowed to dwell on that. And I definitely didn't allow anybody to um, bully me. I fought back. So once they, you know, you either go get bullied or not, that's, you know, <laughs> you weren't going to bully me. Like, by all means, say what you will, just don't touch me was my attitude. But then I went to Muhammad University from fourth grade all throughout high school. Most of the children at that point, you are growing up with these people. These are people you've known for years. And so that atmosphere is a little different. It's a little bit more protected. I don't know how it might've been in public school because as a youngster being in public school, it, you know, you have your little two or three friends, but again, you have to fight. I had to fight a couple of times to establish what wasn't going to go down and then you move you know life goes on but everybody everybody isn't like that but that made me the type to even defend other people like for different reasons if they wasn't going to defend themselves I just felt inclined to do it you know so that's how I was raised though I definitely understand that. <laughs> I can definitely relate to when you were talking about how the darker skin, like the, uh, I say more melanated. <laughs> yeah. um, there was this boy at my, um, one of the high schools I went to, like he was like a darker skinned boy, but they bully him or like just tease him saying like, oh, you're darky or whatever. I'm just thinking like or so then you would have got teased. That's what I'm saying. Like no, that that to hear some of the the stuff they would say to them is like you actually come to the conclusion of, you know, 
this isn't really about me. Mm-hmm. It's like, how are you going to tease someone that's just like a light, a shade lighter than you? <laughs> it's like, you're going to look like that when you walk out into the sun, but okay. <laughs> or, or just in, just the fact that we have self-hatred and colorism in our community still is sad. Um, it is. And even to this day, like to hear certain uh, celebrities, ha- I don't, I don't know how true it is, but to hear that they've said that uh, no dark skin girls, no, you know, girls with weed, they have to have a certain type of hair to come in the club. Mm-hmm. So that mentality, that mentality, you know, it goes always. It's not just that. And like I said, if it weren't for color to be your height or your, your size or mm-hmm. your, um, class the type of shoes you wear whatever people gonna always find something the more you internalize it and allow it to bother you the more it'll happen I think because it's like you attract it people are like animals in that way so that they instinctually just know you know what I mean whether they should bother with you or not it's like you attract that type of energy that you let out type thing. you do you still but that doesn't mean just you could be a zen you could just walk around like this zen all day that doesn't mean nobody won't say or do anything that you're not gonna like because we live in the world of people that we can't control but we can control what we accept and we can control what we allow um to uh affect us emotionally and a lot of the times the things that are being said nasty and negatively are coming from people who don't play a role in your life in any way and when they do is because you allow you know what I mean when they hurt you is because you allow them but the reality is that all sounds good but when you're young and alone and not having anyone that really understands like that you can talk to that is hard and so that's one of the reasons I did agree to do it because I don't want to get on here um, in front. I want people to know, uh, especially younger girls, to know that <clears throat> it is hard, but you can't. You know, you 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 can surpass that, and you can love yourself harder than anybody else possibly could. And once you do that, that self love, <laughs> nothing can top it. So when you do have that and realize that all of the things we desire from outside that feel wanting to feel, you know, beautiful, wanting to feel accepted, those are things that we have to give ourselves first. And, you know, that's the bottom line. I just, I just, I didn't have that coming up. I had it in from my parents and my mom, but they, to me, they didn't experience what I experienced. So they didn't understand. And I think that's what it boils down to is that you feel because it's, it's what, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's real unlikely that you're going to be in the classroom or in the school, even with someone else who has albinism. You know what I mean? Unless it's like a low vision school or something like that, where of course you're going to attract more of that, but is is really rare and so to feel um alone like that like Mm -hmm. nobody really understands you you have i just want them to know that people there are so many people that do understand you who don't have albinism that are sitting right around you you're just too busy paying attention to what people are saying to you (laughs) what people are doing to you and not realizing that the, everybody's experiencing these same negative things is just all about what you will um, accept. And, and that's period. I know I keep saying that, but I just need to stress that it's what you accept, not what someone does that, you know, is going to determine how you feel. And it needs to be said. And I'm glad you're saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it <Okay>. does. <laughs> And I hope whoever um, watches this make, take, takes that to heart because I definitely will because I need to learn to have that type of mentality too. Just You are having that type of mentality right now, even sitting here on this video and talking to me. Like when I first saw you, oh my God, I just was like, I got to hug her. She, she, she don't know. She beautiful. And, I, but you, but, and you really are. Look at those cheekbones. 
look, you gonna take you a mirror tonight and you're gonna look at yourself and you're gonna see the beauty in you at all times because once you see it, everybody else has to see it. Okay, period, and they will. And but anyway, and you can take this off too, because this is a per that was personal for me anyway. Between you and I, I just that's you know, you will, sis, because yeah. you have the foundation. You have it. And I know we um the first time we met, it was just I was like, whoa, it was just seeing someone that I can talk to just an, an older sister with albinism. Just, yeah. yeah that, that meant a lot to me. And I'm, I'm glad it we- It did. When I saw uh, your, you, I saw you as a little girl in the picture with a little white dress on and a scarf, I think, and your brother. And I was like, wow, like, you know, cause I'm the only, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm the only person that I've ever seen, you know, in a nation that had albinism. And so I wondered um, how it was for you, like what uh, it was like. I grew up in the final call and in the mosque, Mariam. So that's in Chicago. Um, and so I just, I, I wonder what the atmosphere was like. I wished I could reach out to you. You're so much younger than I am though. And so, um, and then with me not being registered, you know what I mean? I, I, I would never overstep that, but at the same time, I do know how important it is as a um, woman um, and to, to have someone identify with certain things um, and no matter what, uh, everyone who loves you can say they understand, but you in your heart, you know, they really don't get it, <laughs> you know, and so <laughs> in your heart, you just feel like they just really don't get it, but you appreciate them trying, but they just don't. And so, yeah, it was for me, it was very, very um, a big deal to, to see you and then to actually meet you as a young woman. And you know, you just so bashful and sweet, I could just tell. <laughs> and I was telling my boys like, oh my God, I just really need, you know, I need to talk to her, I could tell. I just knew I did. And so you, off, you offering for me to do the interview on your show is, is really good. I know, um, I avoided doing the other videos and and I'm a, that's the reason why it's such a vulnerability to discuss it you don't I'm the type too where you don't like for people to see weakness and to to have feelings about this is a, you know you you don't want people to think that you're weak but it's not really weak to to be honest about how something makes you feel it's actually strong and it's empowering because once I've said this, who else can say it to me? You know what I mean? Who else can bring it to me? And so, yeah, I, I was very happy to meet you <laughs> on that Savior's Day. That was like the best part for me at the end when I was just like, okay, that just put the icing on the cake that I did get a chance to meet you. And we did, it, we almost missed each other too. So it was, it was good. Um, and I'm really proud of you. I really am. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Come and get the door for me, please. I'm sorry. It's just a busy, busy day today. I don't, and there wasn't even no somebody supposed to be coming over today, but you know how that goes. <laughs> they call you at the last minute. And... <laughs> oh, that's my son coming back from the yeah so go ahead I'm ready. and um i know you mentioned it before um and it was actually going to be one of my questions about growing up in the nation mm -hmm. um just like um not where you treat it any differently but um and not not the challenges but just, just what was it like for me mm -hmm. yeah um <laughs> I I uh I don't know how to even say like I'm so grateful that uh my mother um was an MGT because it gave her 
to me. She had she had the tools. I'm not saying that it made her the person, but it gave her the tools to make me strong and, and the, to guide me in my strength. You know, without um, babying me. You know what I mean? It's it's almost like that. But overall, um, I you know I love the teachings growing up. I um, used to be on the drill team. I went to Muhammad University. We were totally, we were not uh, Sunday, Sunday Muslims. We, <laughs> we, you know, we, I did it all. We volunteered. Like I, I was, I, I was at the final call as a little girl. And so um, that was like a family almost. It, it was so many of us, but everybody knew everybody, you know, you, you know, it was like a family. And so in the mosque, um, we did get the property, Mosque Mariam, um, the National Center, to have that, um, you, you have no idea, but watching your parents go and um, gather charity, like literally, you know, to get this thing going and to go to the property and see it when we purchased it and then after it was renovated and everything so excited to to um go to mui like oh my god we have a school i'm gonna be around you know um other muslim children who are, who don't celebrate christmas like i do so i don't have to sit over here and color in the book while they make their trees you know what i mean just little you 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 want it, it it's you you felt so um a part of something, a part of something that was about something, proud to be a part of it. Uh, uh, the the funny, most people think that you would feel some kind of way because someone asked me about that. Well, like, how was that with the whole white man is the devil thing? Mm -hmm. And it's like the na the nation. <laughs> to other people, that's what it's about, but it's not about that. And so, <laughs> you know, they kind of have this ideology that it's a white hate group instead of being what it is, the nation of Islam. And so um, even though you hearing that at all times, uh, when, when pertaining to um, like the student enrollment and things like that, again, my mother and then even within in the teachings having master Farah, who was uh his his mother was caucasian he has white skin you know what i mean mm -hmm. so those things i guess i suppose help i always knew i was black i always knew i just was oh, oh you know albino i always knew that i would produce melanated children i always knew that um i was original so i didn't ever not feel included in anything Again, in any organization, though, you're going to have ignorance and you're going to have some people that say, you know, uh, negative things um, or even do little negative things. But that I don't I don't label that as a nation thing because <laughs> it wasn't an overall thing. I've never I never felt that was made to feel that way by anybody who. I respected or considered to be someone who cared for me. You know what I mean? I felt embraced and loved. When I got chastised, it was because I had done something when I got, <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I think it built a certain confidence and um, a certain confidence that I don't think you find in um, people who don't have some type of strong foundation. I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't want to be openly saying this stuff though, because it might sound prejudiced. But it it definitely builds a different. That foundation builds a different type of person. A person that's not easily torn. A person that's not easily fooled. A person that's not easily. Um, I don't know. Say manipulated, but we're comfortable with questioning things. We're comfortable with um, 
saying no to something because that's just not what we want to do. I don't think the peer pressure and stuff like that, it kind of made that alleviated, like because you, you, you know who you were. I, it's hard to even put it in the words. You, it, it really is. Like, that's one of the questions I would have needed to get beforehand so I can word it right. <laughs> but, when you um when you have a strong foundation of who you and your people are and whatnot mm -hmm. okay um who you come from and what you're capable of who god is that's the main thing mm -hmm. who god is um then it's not it's not much that you you can't do and so certain things that i was told i wouldn't be able to do having a visual impairment um it that being in the nation made me realize that only you know god would limit the things that i could he only could you know what i mean no man was gonna tell me what i couldn't all do like drawing and being artistic um or even working like that i was told i was going to be on disability my whole life you know so yeah i mean you really have to have a, a foundation of of god and self and so being in the nation gives you that you know what i mean it's, it's it does so even if you venture off from it if you don't choose to uh on paper live that life is just something that's always in you anyway. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something that's always gonna follow you whether I have a scarf on or not. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't imagine that my personality would even be the same if I was not raised in the nation. I think my personality is so strong because, <laughs> because of it, you know, because of that, that um, love for self and realizing that God has given me permission to be once you know that was all that I always I still to this day say that like I'm not going to apologize for, for for how I look God gave me permission you have no right <laughs> and that's the bottom line like when he gave me permission I you talk to him you know what I mean ain't nothing I can do about that and so yeah I love growing up in the nation in that way I love to drill I was excited about that kind of stuff and seeing even to this day when I see the sisters you know in their vanguard uniforms getting it in I mean yeah it's a it's a beauty to it all so um that's the, the that's what I say about that. It was it was a, a different experience, I'm sure. But again, you don't know how different it is to you. You're older and meet people who didn't have that, who didn't grow up with that, um, or knowing their true history, or knowing their um, true origin, or uh, the truth of the Creator, and things like that. When you see other people who haven't had that, then you become more grateful because everyone around me as a child had what I had. So I didn't realize how precious it was. But once you meet people who do not have a knowledge of who they are or just even basic things, you know, it's people out here who don't even know that it's slavery, that it was slavery or how it was conducted or how long it was. There are people out here who don't know um, that, that people like us exist. <laughs> people who are white skinned and blonde hair that are um, black. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it just, it, it makes you appreciate that you weren't made to be ignorant. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, just, it's like, like, hey, if you don't know, maybe I can teach you about it. It's like, just because there's a whole lot of people like us that's mm -hmm. out there and you might like have never seen one just yeah out, but it's like a moment to just teach them about it gave um lend them new knowledge yeah so that they that they can know instead of being offended because half of the time people say things in an ignorant way but that the word is ignorant for a reason they don't know <clears throat> that what they're saying is is mean or they don't know that the way that they're asking is uh 
uh, derogatory, if that's the word we want to use or, or demeaning. Mm-hmm. And so you have to educate them and tell them um, if you choose, because a lot, sometimes I don't feel like I need to educate you, you know? right <laughs> I'm just living my life and I, I mean it's just situation it depends on what it is like people do weird the weirdest things this one girl walked up to me um and like put her hands on my face and she was like oh my god and I'm, I grabbed her hands like what are you she's like you are so beautiful oh my god what are you are you mixed are you this and I'm just like I mean literally this Chicago so some people are crazy but I was just like so you know, like, are you serious? And she, she really was. She, and she, you know, she was treating me like I was Tinkerbell or something. Like I was something that wasn't real. You know what I mean? She basically, (laughs) she objectified me. That's how I felt. I'm a person. You don't just walk up to me and touch me. Now, that doesn't happen to other. I don't think, you know, other people can understand that, you know what I'm saying? So those are the moments that I'm talking about when people just want to touch your hair or, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And you just like, don't objectify me. I'm not a, a museum uh, um, exhibit, you know? So in those moments, no, I don't feel like I need to educate you because somebody going to have to come educate me in a minute because I'm going to act real dumb. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't get out of my face. So um, <laughs> it depends on how it's presented and when. But if it's somebody asking legitimately wanting to know, because people legitimately do just want to know, like, um, you don't look that you don't look white, you know, and so you tell them, you know what I mean? That that's when you want to tell them because they really just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess the next question. <clears throat> We're moving on from just growing up and your experiences. <clears throat> um, so what do you so what do you what do you do for a living? I work for rehabilitation services for the Department of Human Services. I'm a case coordinator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So social services. Okay. I was gonna um as well, I don't I was going to ask if, um, like, your albinism, like, ever, um, like, it's going to sound like that word question affected that type of <laughs> work, but. Yeah, it does. It does affect what you do, because with certain things, um, you need accommodation, mm-hmm. again, because of the visual impairment. I do notice that a lot of people don't let it stop them. You have everything from makeup artists to um, <laughs> uh clothing designers you have um people just don't let it stop them now we live in such a world where a lot of those limitations that i face or people even young you know older than i am ain't no telling what they face things have changed like uh for me to even be able to do design work on a computer now um those accommodations that I hear now did exist though when I was in college like uh zoom type zoom text type um things or uh, what do they call it accessibility on the on the machine so like even with the apple computer you can go ahead and just select to have accessibility on you don't have to buy anything extra to have it and literally will zoom in and do a reading and all of that stuff but i can't imagine before that you know what people did um like to have to use a cash register or things like that so yeah for me definitely it i have to have accommodations to do certain things so it does affect that um even the lighting in places that you are you know what I mean? So I would definitely suggest if you're going to do anything, and it's just not for you, but anybody who who has literally has low vision, having some type of um, skill or like not even, I, I don't always say college for everybody because college is not for everybody. It could be a trade that you need to do or establishing your own, but for me, it really makes sense to try to find something that you are able to 
whether you working for someone or able to contract yourself as an individual to pick something like that that when you do have um when you do face challenges that you feel love it and are passionate enough to be consistent so that you'll find a way to get it done because that's how it was for me with art like the digital part wasn't that a problem but when you have uh to be precise with your hand and certain certain mediums not a pencil but maybe like a, a ray a repeatograph i don't know if you know what have heard of that it's like a really thin line pen for like uh maybe somebody who's an architecture or some type of graph drawing mm -hmm. so hand-eye coordination with something like that is very important you know what i mean so those were challenging type of things, things where you you're dependent on your your vision and unfortunately it's going to take you a little bit longer to be as precise as somebody else would because of that. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, what else can I use an example just stuff like that making sure that you have that you have a skill that you are not just good at, mm -hmm. but great at. So that no matter how it changes and how it may challenge you to get it done, you're going to figure out a way to do that. And then also, you know, if not that, then yeah, some type of degree so that whatever situation you're in, your um, ability, it, it, it um, trumps the fact that they may have to give you accommodations. But I think going into your own thing, like it's really best to try to find something where you can you can do it alone and and not necessarily just your own business, but like what you're doing, something that's going to be able to monetize. So, you know, that you won't have to face certain challenges dealing with somebody else's company and depending on them to have to, you know, mm -hmm. give you what it is that you need. Fortunately for me, I work for um the government so it's that's a given they're going to do that you know what i'm saying but when you work in a private industry um that's not always going to be a given they may use an excuse as to why they won't hire you but i i know for me i did at one point feel like they just not hiring me because they know i need you know what i mean accommodation so and that could have just been me feeling that but <laughs> I think it's best to have a route to be really skilled at, you know, whatever and have a passion for it so that whatever obstacles you are going to face are not going to um, deter you from doing it or make you, uh, yeah, that's the word deter you. I'm trying to think of the other word I'm thinking, trying to think of, but you don't want nothing to discourage you, yeah, to discourage you from doing it. And it's like, if even if you do face a challenge like if you're like really passionate about it you can find a way to overcome that challenge you will find a way to overcome it and it's going to be for you a victory in just that that knowing that you have overcame that challenge mm -hmm. um yeah so that's that's what i would say i think the, having a visual impairment you're definitely going to have challenges no matter what it is that you're trying to do um but again, when you care about it, when you love it, then you're going to you're going to just deal with whatever those obstacles are. Mm -hmm. It makes you it actually builds you and you 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 feel it's a different type of feeling when you know that you have to to really go above and beyond to get something done that somebody else didn't and is realizing that, you know, I'm triumphant and I will be mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But it you know, it takes. I guess a, 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 a strong person to, to get to that point. And so that's another reason these videos are important because you don't want someone else to have to experience certain things to, in order for them to get, you know, there. I want you to be there already so that, you know, <laughs> or, or be well on your way. So that when you are, you know, an adult, you're not just coming to the realization of things, you actually just enjoying, you know, the fruits of, of all of this hard work, all of these challenges, and then all of the beauty of it as well. All of the beauty of it as well. So I guess um, the last thing would be um, if, well, not, not the last thing, but 
um, or if there's any more words that you'd like to say for anyone else <clears throat> who um, might watch the video, um, just um, words okay. you'd like to say. With encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, what would I have wanted somebody to say to me? You know what? I, I hate to be, I have to say it though. Like, um, you are not the only one. So get over it. Move on and live your life. Because you are not the first or the last. It's going to be set more like you. The sooner you embrace and love and get past um, this. And that's just in the assumption that, the, these, that I'm speaking specifically to someone who feels an inability to embrace themselves because they have an albinism or inability to see the beauty and love for themselves because they have albinism that um, you only get one life. And God and you really, I feel like our spirits choose our vessel. And so your spirit saw something so beautiful in this vessel that it chose it. So you have to embrace it, you know? And the only reason we don't is because the rest of the world does not, or we, we feel that it does not, or that it's not acceptable. But I promise before it was ever introduced to you, that you were different, you only saw yourself as beautiful until somebody else told you that you weren't. And so you are the author, you know, of your life. You are the one who will write the story. So you choose the characters and you choose the theme. <laughs> And that's the bottom line. So anybody that tries to come and rewrite your story, you got to get your eraser. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that's all I can say about that is that it, it boils down to self-love and what you're going to accept in, into, your in, into your energy. Um, period. So once that self-love and that ability to see your own beauty and, and love it and embrace it comes, then in your attitude changes, the, the attitudes of those around you will change. And if those negative attitudes still are lingering, then you just got to kind of wipe it off. You know what I mean? That means there's some people you have to get out of your circle. And that's another thing. You have to keep people that are positive around you. You cannot be um, dealing with people who give you uh, back back um handed compliments or say little underhanded things that make you question something about yourself but even with that once you have that that foundation of this is what i am who i am and, and you know that's it there's nothing anyone else will be able to say or do to to penetrate that that layer you know what I mean? So that's all I have to say about that. And yeah, we do have to do a part two. Maybe I'll be a little bit more, you know, shortened answers and- Oh, no, your, your, the land <laughs> answers is totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad and I'm, I'm glad we did this. So yeah, just let me know when you want to do it again. And I definitely have no problem with that at all, sis. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this. No problem at all. No problem at all. So just let me know when the next time is and send the greetings to your family for me. Will do. Okay. Um, so just two more things. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you'd like to shout out? Um, this is your time to do so. Um, mm -hmm. So if there's any links or um, anything, you can put that in the description. Oh, okay. I mean, not really. My Instagram page is shy go ill. You know why I'm saying that? Because people are always like, what is that? What is that? Shy go ill. Chicago, Illinois. That's where I'm from. 
that's why I, I use that because I feel like I'm so shot town like I'm like Kanye you know <laughs> without the crazy but <laughs> no I love Kanye West I, I even at this point where he is now I still love the brother um but anyway back to me a shot go ill that's c-h-i-g-o-i-l-l -L on Instagram I don't really um invite Facebook people I do have a, a, a Facebook for my page uh my artwork called Moreo Designs, that's M-O-R-E-Y-O -E Designs on Facebook. I really don't know what the link is though. So um, that's it. Oh yeah, let me show you my little shirt that my little boy, my boys, I don't know if you can see it right. They, they came up with this concept for this shirt. It says bread maker. I don't know if you can see it with the little toaster and the money coming out the toaster. And um, the purpose of it was me telling them they could do, you know, if you want to do something, you can put your mind to it. They did the concept and I did the design on, can you see it that good though? I don't know. I'm trying to show, whatever. But anyway, I, I designed the concept, I designed their idea um, and we had the shirts made. And so I was like, I'm gonna wear my, my boys design today because, uh, I was very proud of them. They they worked on a couple of things. This was just the first one we executed. And um, just the idea is that though you're young, you have the ability to do, you know, some of the, some, anything we limit ourselves. And so uh, just trying to open their eyes to that, but I was very proud of them and they little ideas. So, um, we are not selling any shirts or anything like that but you know at some point that's going to be the plan so yeah no own business <laughs> exactly even if it's even if it's just to see what it's like to run something to plan something to have to order something and meet deadlines so it's a good experience for them and um that's pretty much i don't have anything else i, I want to shout out you know <laughs> when we get a page for that hopefully by the time we do the second interview we'll have a page for for the shirts and then i'll be able to at least discuss i'm just not realizing how dark this is the video is i'm sorry because it's dusty in here it's light enough for me but i'm like gosh is this too was it too dark the mm, it, was, it was all good you promise I promise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, and I just remember um, next time, well, for part two, we definitely got to talk about your artwork and how you got interested in that and everything. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. And I'll be prepared to, to do that one at least, to have um, some of my work to show. Maybe I'll send the questions the next time. <laughs> Girl, if you don't want me to be talking for 50 years, you better send me some of the questions. It was like, oh my gosh, she's so long-winded. She started out talking about one thing and now we talking about something else. So yeah, but the, I, I really think it's because it's our first time having a really extended conversation. And so that's really what it is for me is just talking to you, you know? So yeah, I, I even outside of this, you you can talk to me. I'm just letting you know, like for real. I'm. I consider you like we don't know each other, but you like my little sister or something because you just, you know. I mean that. I re <laughs> I really do mean that. I really do mean that. And so just know that no matter what it is, you know, despite my not being registered, I am still, you know, in the mind frame. I would never say or do anything or advise you in the way other than what I know, you know what I mean? So that that you were raised in, but this is just not not about life, just if you need somebody to vent or talk to, somebody who understands, that's, that's, I'm definitely hoping that you know that I mean that, okay? Thank you so much, I'll definitely keep that in mind. And earlier I was thinking like, when, um, when I was talking about when I first met you, I was like, you're like the older sister that I never had. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely feel like that. I'm telling you, it, in a protective kind of way, too. Like, <laughs> nobody better not mess with her. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I just felt that. And, yeah, so that I just, I hope you really do know that. I mean, that. that's all. Before I get off this Zoom, I need you to know that. 
Oh, oh, and that's a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Yay.